Diversifies a horse to catch and beat in today's Evan Shipman, but can he carry his speed a mile and an eighth in our feature race? Trainer Todd Pletcher is loaded for Saturday's Travers with three possible runners. Can Derby winner always dreaming, Belmont winner Taprit, or Curlin winner outplay deliver another win for him? And Gunrunner is back to work for the Woodward as we look at a late, actually, for Claiborne Farm. The big win in the Alabama. We'll have all the latest, and there is Gunrunner. On to the Woodward. He was back to work this morning, and the pressure just got turned up for the Whitney winner. We'll explain later on in the show. Welcome to Saratoga Live, presented by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. Monday afternoon action here at Saratoga, and a happy total solar eclipse to everyone watching as well. Uh, Fox Sports 2 and MSG Plus. Good to have you with us here in Saratoga Springs. Greg Wolf alongside racing analyst Gabby Gaudet. Happy Eclipse Day. You as well. It was pretty <laughs> fun. I will say it was weird walking around here at Saratoga. It, kinda, it wasn't dark, but it was hazy almost. It's fun. Strange things allegedly can happen on an Ooh. Eclipse Day. Our feature race, we have a couple of scratches in there, which makes Diversify seem even that much more difficult to try and catch and beat in that race. Absolutely. Now, as you pose at the top of the show, this horse is going to have to prove that he can kind of stretch out his speed to go two turns on the main track at Saratoga. He's never been at Saratoga and sometimes a little bit more of a demanding surface. But last time out, he also showed that he can harness that speed. So he is going to be the horse to beat. We have everything here, every angle covered with the New York Racing Association and time for what's trending right now. We're going to talk a lot about this eclipse coming up because that has been the story of the day all across the country. Let's take a look at who's saying what on social media about this eclipse here. Horse racing and solar eclipses have always gone together. There's no eclipse, 18 for 18 in his career, and he had to retire because no one wanted to face him. Wow. Pretty incredible. That is awesome. Good t tweet there, too. Uh, nice reminder by Larry Colmus, our track announcer here, to tell people not to look directly at the sun. I'm sure people will, though. Yeah, I saw people doing that all day. We actually had some of the special glasses. We're trying to help people out and not have them burn their retinas out. Uh, Larry just reminded us not to look directly into the sun. I was running with scissors at the time. That's not a good thing. Hopefully that was not here at the track. I sense, <laughs> sense a little bit of sarcasm there, but uh, no, it was fun. I didn't look at the sun. I think I'm good. No, but we did have these. The protective goggles. All angles covered. And of course, <laughs> New York Racing Association has its own astronomer on hand as well. Let's check in with Maggie Wolfendell for the latest. And Greg, I did get a chance to look up at the eclipse with those special glasses we were handing out here on track, as I'm sure a lot of people came to the races today to catch the solar eclipse. Uh, it's been the first in America, in the States, I should say, since 1979. And a lot of people up on the roof checking out uh, the solar eclipse through the telescopes. They were able to look up the sun if they had those protective goggles, guys. We, we definitely made sure everybody Everybody was protected. Also, people got a chance to win a chance to watch the solar eclipse with three Eclipse Award winning jockeys. Richard Migliori, Ramon Dominguez, and Angel Cadero were all on board to watch the eclipse with some special winning fans. And I feel special because I'm joined now by our on track astronomer. That is Benjamin Palmer. And Benjamin, you also give tours here. So you're well versed in both things that were happening here at the track today. But as far as the eclipse happened at 241, what were you doing at that very moment? Oh, from that wonderful period stretching from 122 all the way up to 355, we were busy as bees over there, very solar astronomy related bees over in Paddock Info, keeping an eye on all of those wonderful moments of the eclipse. 241 was our maximum period of coverage, 66%. We had, I would guesstimate, a fair few people. When I say a fair few, I'm talking hundreds over there who all not only got views of the eclipse, for most of them, it was their first experience seeing any astronomical object, period. And if you're gonna see a bright star, why not our home star, the sun to begin with, especially in a venue as unique as Saratoga? And millennials like me included, I hate to admit that, but yes, we weren't <laughs> alive in 1979. So yeah, it was our first experience with Eclipse here. And as uh, Greg was mentioning, 
nice coincidence with the horse eclipse as well. And you were talking about some numbers kind of lining up with his 18 for 18. Oh, for sure. It's not too often that you get tradition, history, and the numerical kind of spectrum <laughs> lining up in one go. Here we are all the way uh, in 2017 celebrating quite a momentous day in astronomy. But as you say, it's a momentous day in thoroughbred racing too. Not too often you get eclipse, eclipse award winners, and a solar eclipse in the same day. But in terms of some of those numeric connections, eclipse, obviously a great horse, had 18 magnificent wins under that belt. Well, as you can guess, we measure eclipses in 10-year cycles. Guess which number it is today? You got it, number 18. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, you're a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for uh, providing the fans with a, a great kind of backdrop for the solar eclipse today. Thanks again. Oh, my pleasure, Maggie. I think anytime you get a chance to do it, it is a spectacular thing to do. Here in Saratoga, we're going a step above. It's not too often you get to combine two venues this unique, but you know, it really is something. Just kind of like the, the sport we're watching, this is the story of us. Astronomy matters in some way to each and every one of us here, and every single second of this day, we were able to be a part of it. That's pretty darn special, to say the least. Yes, it is. Greg, Ben, you got to come check out Ben sometimes. He can tell you all about the horse as well as astronomy. There you go. <laughs> and I love that visor. I, he had to make that special just for today, right? Oh, for sure. He's a man of many talents. That looks homemade. It does. <laughs> Incredible. We're going to be talking Eclipse all afternoon long. We just got to find that numerical key to the day where the race is coming up. Let's go back to 1979, the last time there was a total solar eclipse in the U.S. Gallon of gas was just 86 cents. A Sony Walkman, this blew me away in the meeting, cost $200. That's a little pricey. I still have a Sony Walkman, by the way. What do you think I can get for it? Whoa. Top grossing film, which was, have you seen Kramer versus Kramer? I have not. Dustin Hoffman, Meryl Streep, it's must-see. Okay. I'll take your word for it. You're not going to watch it? And Spectacular Bid was a Kentucky Derby winner. Horse of the Year was affirmed. Who's it going to be this year? Oh. Well, we'll see, I guess. I want I an answer, know. Gabby Goddad. I'm not an oracle here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at today's races. We have nine on the card. We will bring you the final three of the afternoon here. The seventh race coming up next, mile and three sixteenths on the turf. The Evan Shipman is our feature. That is now a four horse field and Diversify again, gonna be the one to catch in front. Race nine will close it out on the inner turf for non-winners of three lifetime running for a $50,000 claiming tag. Play along from home as you watch the races here on Saratoga Live. Get signed up and started with NairaBets.com. If you bet 200, you'll get 200 in your account. Use the promo code Pick five to take advantage of that offer, and you can get signed up with Naira Bets all across the country. Track conditions for this Monday afternoon here at the Spa, brought to you by John Deere. The main track fast turf condition is firm. And let's get into it here. Race seven. Mile and three sixteenths on the grass. New York Fred allowance optional claiming field. Chad Brown. His converge dropping down in class. And whenever you have Chad Brown with a class dropper, or he's probably going to be the favorite. That is the case here. Five to two. Javier Castellano on board, trying Saratoga for the second time. Let's send it downstairs for more with the rest of our crew. New York Racing Association handicapper Andy Serling, former New York Met and L.A. Dodger, Paula Duca, guys. Seems a lot like the mile and three sixteenths is the distance of the week. This is actually the third mile and three sixteenths race we've run yeah. here. And I think that's one of the questions about the race. And it's also a question for the favorite along with the drop down. I got to ask a question before we get into handicapping. Did you put those glasses over your glasses for the solar eclipse? I did. You, was it wonderful? It was an incredible. It was really a special when instead of betting a $244 exacta, I was on the roof looking at the eclipse. And as somebody pointed out to me, I had to get 30 feet closer to the sun. Now, you all, that you made all the difference. now you're going to think about tangerines for the rest of the <laughs> night. But to get to the seven-year converge, yeah, I mean, Blinkers went on three starts ago. The horse, I thought, ran pretty good two back, Andy. And, you know, the last time he got a little rank early and he didn't really, I think, like the distance a mile and a quarter. Now you're dropping for 25. Listen, 
We've seen Todd Pletcher play this game on the drop. I think Chad's starting to play it now. Todd with another win, just a race before. He needs to start catching up. And Chad is 4 for 14 along that stat in Saratoga. And this is his win at Belmont Park. He took advantage of a pace here. He's the best horse in yes. this race. I don't think there's a big question about that. It's not the drop, Paul. And I, I picked this horse, but yeah. it's the sharp drop. Running it's, for 25,000, it is a bit of an alarm. Yeah, though. it's an alarming. Now, does he? I don't think he really hangs here. I thought he, he finished well. But when you look at the bottom of his PPs, he has trouble at the gate. So I'm wondering if he has some back end issues. Sometimes horses that get out of their gate a little bit slow. Sometimes they'll have back end issues. And he is a four year old gelding. You know, they paid 240,000 for him. He's made 200000 so they sort of be getting out, and this is a, maybe a logical job. My worry is his last race or last two races with blinkers were good. Why the drop? Well, that's the question. Yeah. And why the sharp drop to 25? Because yeah. this horse will clearly be claimed. Now, Uncle Cy may get claimed as well for 25000 He was claimed by his current trainer, David Duggan, three starts back for 40000 David's a very good trainer. I thought he's run well in both of his races. Last time out, he was in a very, very tough field. He gets picks up by uh, Jose Ortiz. Yeah. Don't want to knock Dylan Davis, but Jose Ortiz, leading rider of the country right now. I thought he was the backup to Converge. Yeah, I'm with you. And I think Uncle Cy got put behind the eight ball a little bit. You know, when you look before his PPs, he showed way more speed. I, when they take the blinkers off, it has helped his finish, but I think he needs to be up close. He ran a good race last time. He had some issues. He was flying outside late, but maybe Jose can place him a little bit better today. It is a question of who of the contenders, and the two, the seven, eight, and 11 yeah. are the major contenders. Which one of these can be most forwardly placed? I think it might be Hidden Val, Maggie. Totally agree with you there, Andy, as he is a horse that this is one of the longer distance he's run over in the past. And looking at him here for Jason Service as he makes his third start for the barn, I think he looks physically looks better than ever now as an eight year old. He is a horse that in the past has gotten wound up, but it seems as though Jason has kind of relaxed him and that bodes well for this mile and three sixteenths distance. And as you said, Andy, he should take advantage of being forwardly placed here, um, which is not going to necessarily be the case uh, for number two vintage matters really cool we have three gray horses in the field all three of them breaking from the three inside posts as vintage matters I just feel as though he has a little bit of hang in him uh, overall yes I do believe he's the most effective um, slash accomplished at this kind of distance but still he's a horse that last time I thought he looked better than ever he should have gotten the job done he was unable to do so against a horse uh, that was coming back off a short rest and I just feel like we're going to see the same thing from him here once again. He might continue to struggle to get through this condition. Greg? All right, Maggie, thank you. We are approaching the 10-minute mark to post. Well, the post parade when we come back from a short timeout here on Saratoga Live. Of course, still to come, Governor Malibu back on the campaign trail. Can he finally score a Saratoga victory? We'll find out in the Evan Shipman. The graded stakes winning son of Bernardini is off to a sensational start at stud. Among the leading freshman sires by winners in graded stakes horses, his first crop two-year-olds commanded prices up to 36 times his stud fee. Leading progeny include TD and Rising Star Recruiting Ready, second in the Bashford Manor Stakes, and Stakes Place Performer Junkie. The pedigree, speed, and class to become the next star in this sensational sire line. Algorithms at Claiborne Farm. Make Naira Bets your home for online horse racing and betting. Use Naira Bets to bet on live horse racing from around the world. Bet from anywhere, anytime using your computer or mobile device. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Sign up at NairaBets.com and start earning your sign-up bonus today. Naira Bets, racing's best play. Use promo code PICK5 to get a $200 new member sign-up bonus on NairaBets.com.
Back on Saratoga Live here on this Monday afternoon at the spot. Thanks for being with us. Want to remind everybody to play along with the Saratoga Showdown without risking any of your own money. And you can win some real prizes like 50,000 Naira Betts wagering points, the equivalent of $50 to play with in your account, and an entry into a 2018 Belmont Stakes prize package valued at over $2,000. Go to saratogashowdown.com or naira.com to get involved. It's a great opportunity to kind of slowly start diving into the betting game, and there's no risks involved. Perfect. Yeah, if you've never wagered before, great way to get introduced to it without risking any of your own money and play along with these races. And again, you can win some real prizes as well. Post parade coming up, we're going to start off with Hobo for trainer David Donk, Manny Franco rides. Got the victory last time out facing restricted made in special weight company, but the horse is improving and surely isn't impossible at eight to one. Vintage Matters, he ran huge last time out. There was a horse all alone on the lead named Voodoo Song who went gate to wire, trained by Michael Dickinson. John Velasquez aboard. Clear-cut second choice in the doubles. A plotter in a race where the pace is kind of murky. Birchwood Road is the three. Julian Leperu for Newman Racing and Tom Morley. One of his best races was for 40,000 when he was more forwardly placed. Maybe they can employ that tactic today. Tom Bush sends out Bush Mill Giants, son of Giants Causeway with Luis Saez aboard. Another horse that seems a little bit pace dependent and doesn't have much pace to work with today. And the horse to beat, but red flags with a big drop here on Converge for Chad Brown, owned by Paul Pompa Jr. and Javier Castellano aboard. Faced some quality company at three, but since then has kind of tailed off, especially in his last start. Phil Mar Stable sends out Uncle Cy, trained by David Duggan with Jose Ortiz. A clear... A, a, a a, a solid price play in the race. A horse who can absolutely win this and gets a nice rider change to Jose Ortiz. Superhawk has Jose Lizcano aboard for Wachtel Stable and trained by Chris Engelhardt. And this one is hard to like here just given the pace dynamics of this race, but he has a price. Profits Cat is the 10. It's Eric Consell for Gary Siaka. Tough to make. 0 for 27 lifetime on turf. 3 for 51 overall, but could be the controlling speed. And a player in from the also eligible is Hidden Bow for owner Michael Dubb. I ride Ortiz Jr. aboard for Jason Service. He's got tactical speed, but has been informed since the claim into Jason Service's barn. 5 for 43, however, on the turf. And rooftop view gets in as well. Florent Giroux aboard for Michael Lauer. This horse would be a long shot. Ran here just the other day. He'd have to improve immeasurably. Yeah, around five days ago, he wound up fourth at a similar condition. So this also eligible, Gabby, gets in Hidden Vow in here and just missed last time out for New York Bread 25 at Belmont. I thought it was a good race, and, and look, Can Paul and I last deal? time out, uh, taking a look at this performance, he was second behind Mo Bridge, but I thought it was good because he was game to the finish. The winner kind of made a little bit of an earlier move in Mo Bridge, and Mo Bridge did come back out to win, getting an 86 fire speed figure. The reason why I like him today to try to beat the favorite in here, though, is he's tactical. He can be a little bit more forwardly placed and not so pace dependent in a race that has murky pace. It was nine to two right now. Yeah, Mobridge would come back to win, of course, for Bill Mott, and I was at that at this meet. This horse, the, the thing that you have to like that I like that Gabby um, likes about the eleven, the three races this horse has run, or four races from the outside slots, the eight, the nine, the ten, and the eight. The horse always runs good from the outside slot. Doesn't and really need a lot of cover. And a mile and three sixteenths. It's almost a quarter mile run yeah. to the turn. Yeah. So it'll be fine. The problem with Hidden Vow, and, and he can win this race. I'm not in any way knocking him, but a problem I think for him is he's five for 50 lifetime with 19 seconds and thirds. And his last race, yeah, the pace a little bit against mm -hmm. him, but he hung in the stretch and he's supposed to beat Mobridge if he beats these. Now, Jason Service, about as good a claiming trade on the turf as there is in the game. He's enjoying an incredible yeah. meat. So I, nothing was, he got Slim Shady home at the meet. And if he can get Slim Shady <laughs> home, his first turf win in five years, he can do anything. I don't love his last race. He's not a winning type. I was at Santa Anita, I think, when Slim Shady won yeah, that day. That was his last turf yeah. win. Yeah, but here's the thing about Service. Whenever you're looking at Jason Service runners and they just have that spotty one work, that's when they're live. And you can see the 11 warming up off the pony right now. Now, when you get to Uncle Sire or you get to the 7 here, Converge, 
What do you do? How do you read inside the lines when you get to converge? Well, I think, you know, I, I, I'm just, I like the seven, but the drop down scary. Yeah. The 11's best asset is he can be forwardly placed. Vintage matters cannot be forwardly placed. There's nothing about his running lines that suggests he's going to be near the pace. Now we'll see. Maybe John Velasquez tries to get him closer. He couldn't run down Voodoo Song in the race we're no. going to take a look at here. And Voodoo Song was a heavy favorite yeah. coming in for his second win in a four day span. Having said that, you watch the race. Ouch. I feel like Ouch. he had time to run him down, and he Ouch. just doesn't get there. Watch right here. Ouch. 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 Like you're going up just, the plate sometimes? I mean, like, he's just not <laughs> moving that well. And when you look, Voodoo Song open 20, he's never going by if they would have won that, again. That's the way I felt. That's, my, that's the way I felt, too, in the race. And now, was he chasing a lone pace setter, and that could get tiring? He got dead tired, and I will give him credit. He was trying. But, man, those last drives didn't look pretty. Yeah, listen, I'm not saying he can't win. I think the winner is among these four horses that are taking the bulk of the play. To be honest, Birchwood Song, the three, was the only horse a bit of a price. Birchwood Road, excuse me, that I thought. The other thing about Birchwood Road, you know, Tom Morley is trainer. A very shrewd ride with Javier Castellano. And I want Tom and, and Javier thinking about it that day. Going the lead three back in a slow pace. They still lost, but they narrowly got beat. Yeah. I bet you they're thinking with Julian Leperu, a rider who's very capable of being aggressive despite what people say. I'll bet you Birchwood Road is more forwardly placed. I just don't know if he's good enough, Gabby. That's the question, right? Because in the last two starts, he've, he's kind of stepped up in class. He didn't get off to a great start last time out. But, Andy, I think that, that you're, you hit the nail on the head. This is a race with a lot of murky pace, and if they try to employ that tactic today, well, it seemed to definitely work out for him. And he's dropping in class. This is a drop from his last two races, so he surely isn't impossible. 11-1 on Birchwood Road. The guys downstairs were talking about vintage matters. He was chasing Voodoo Song, who opened up about 15 lengths on that field last time out. Nobody else was near Voodoo Song in the end, except for Vintage Matters. With more on this five-year-old, let's go to Maggie. And Greg, it was quite a performance by Voodoo Song that day. And just to get back, though, to what Paulie was talking about with number two, Vintage Matters. He's a horse that here in 2017 has put on the front bandages, front bandages only. Oftentimes, turf horses don't run in any bandages at all because they don't need to. They don't run down on this surface, as I was talking about, without abrasion. So when you see bandages on a horse, it's usually a telltale sign that they are, are there's some issues that they need to be protected um, with, with those bandages. So yeah, he's a horse with some talent, but still, like I said, it, it's going to be tough for him here as we'll turn to the inside runner in number one, Hobo. This will be the furthest he's run. He's coming off that maiden win. First time blinkers on, he gets the win here for David Donk. He's intriguing to me because he is that big rangier type so I'm not opposed at him being able to handle this mile and 3 16th distance as we always say guys distance is the great equalizer we'll see who likes it best here well 10 to 1 on hobo yeah for David Donk put it all together career start number seven here in his Saratoga debut back on August 6th his races are really not that bad, Greg. Uh, even his turf debut, he was a good second behind LNZ. Two starts back, I thought he was very pace compromised. He couldn't close into a slow pace. And then last time out, he had the perfect trip and won. But the blinkers on has definitely helped this horse because he's always been a little green, a little distracted coming down the stretch. So maybe he's just putting it all together, and he has a great post position. Getting set to load here. Seventh race coming up. It is still converged. The big class drop for Chainer. Chad Brown, Javier Castellano will be aboard. Not scaring a lot of people away here. Two to one is the top choice. Oh, he wins with these types of droppers, but we don't really see it very frequently. And I, I can't take him. Not so much because of the drop. I don't think it's a dubious drop. I just don't like him because he seems pace dependent. Well, in his last two races, too, he's been rank in each of them. Not a great sign. We'll see if he can settle this afternoon. Let's send it upstairs to the voice of horse racing's Triple Crown for the call, Larry Colmus. And now Birchwood Road will move into the starting gate along with Prophet's Cat. Here is Bushmill Giant stepping up. Hidden Vow takes his spot in the gate, waiting for Converge and Rooftop View. 
Two to one favorite is Converge as he goes in. Rooftop view completes the line. They are all in line. They're off. Was a good start for Converge. And it is Birchwood Road who's going out to the early lead. Converge up and on the pace two. Bushmill Giant between those two. And on the outside, Superhawk and Hidden Vow. Then a break of another two and a half lengths more back to Hobo. Converge is a little bit hard to control early there, running along in third position in the early stages. Vintage Matters is after that. And then Prophet's Cat to the outside as they make their way into the turn. Rooftop View is next. And Uncle Cy takes his spot at the back of the pack. Converge did not handle that first turn at all. He's going very wide and going up outside of the two leaders after an opening quarter mile in 22.79 seconds. So they go on to the back stretch here and it is Birchwood Road in front. Converge has moved up on the outside three wide on that turn. Up into second, Superhawk is third behind them. After that, it's Bushmill Giant running in fourth, racing four lengths off the lead. And then it's back to Hidden Vow, fifth up the back stretch, clear of Hobo. And then Vintage Matters on the outside, Uncle Cy, Prophet's Cat, and Rooftop View. The half was 46.53. So it's been a very solid pace so far here, set by Birchwood Road and Julian Leparu, who lead it by two and a half. Converged to settle down somewhat, running in second, moving for the far turn. And then it's Bushmill Giant, third, Hidden Vow, fourth on the outside. Hobo in behind them. Vintage Matters is next. Uncle Cy still about six and a half lengths off the lead at this stage. And pulling up on the far turn is Super Hawk. And make their way to the top of the stretch. Birchwood Road, the leader. Converge takes him on. Hidden Vow comes three wide. Bushmill Giant cuts the corner. Uncle Cy finds a seam and begins to move up on the outside. And here he comes. And Vintage Matters is there, too. Furlong to run. Converge in front. Uncle Cy finishing fast on the outside. And then comes Hobo between horses. As they come to the final 16th, here's Uncle Cy on the outside to take the lead. Hobo runs with him to the wire. Then Converge. Uncle Cy won it. And then it was Hobo, followed by Converge and Birchwood Road. Uncle Cy with the win here, picks up his second win on the turf. And Jose Ortiz, such a difference maker, big jockey switch here. Yes, I can agree with you on that, Greg. But he also did get a very ideal setup. We saw going into the first turn, actually, Converge having some behavioral issues and not, as he has been doing in the past several starts, not being able to really settle and kind of losing ground going into the first turn. But they set pretty quick fractions and it kind of fell apart for the horse that was on the lead and those who were kind of chasing those early fractions. I thought it was a phenomenal performance from Birchwood Road, who was part of that fast early pace who just seeded the lead late but guys that was a, a great trip for uncle Cy. yeah it was i mean i converge ran an amazing race considering he almost bolted oh the first my turn. god he was won the and race javier didn't know what to do with him and I yeah, think Javier I the right thing he said i can't control him i gotta go set him up and try to get him to settle and it's amazing he finished as close as he did the fast pace is a little bit dubious because the turf is so firm but uncle Cy, jose ortiz what can you say paul he made an unbelievable move if we could take it back to the top of the stretch it, it it was unbelievable. Now, I know he got a great trip, but this kid, you know, a lot of riders want to go seven, eight, nine wide. He cut that corner just enough, split a little bit, because he knows Uncle Cy is really not going to go by. I'll tell you what, the one hobo was battling in between. That was a good call by Maggie. He ran very, very well. It was a good call by Maggie, indeed, a horse who really outran his odds in there. Absolute no-show from the two vintage matters. Nothing. Nothing. And he got the pace to run yeah. into, Gabby. <laughs> He did, and he had a clear run down the lane, dear down the stretch, and just no punch for him at all. But Uncle Side does get the win here, 9-2, 8-1, 7-3, here in the seventh from Saratoga. Our feature race coming up next, that is the Evan Shipman. We'll wrap up prices in the seventh race, set up the eighth when we come back. Still ahead, more on trainer Todd Pletcher's trio of runners, the Derby winner. The Belmont winner, an outplay from the Curlin All looking to next Saturday's Travers. 
Undefeated in sprint competition, Eclipse champion Run Happy captured three grade one victories and set blistering speed records at both Keeneland and Saratoga. In the Breeders' Cup sprint, he dominated the world's fastest runners, going six furlongs in a record-breaking 108 and chain. The only horse nominated for three Eclipse awards, Run Happy was crowned champion male sprinter, all the while racing 100% drug-free. Champion, millionaire, record-breaker, Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on Saratoga Live on Fox Sports 2 and MSG Plus. It was Uncle Cy with the win in race 7, $11.40 for the victory. Owned by Phil Mars Stables, trained by David Duggan and Jose Ortiz. Fourth winner on the afternoon. Let's send it downstairs to Maggie for more. And joined by Dave Duggan, as well as his owner, that's Phil Madden of Philmar Stables, here with Uncle Cy. And Dave, a horse that in his third start for you, what made you enter him in a mile and three sixteenths race? Just seemed like the logical thing to do. I mean, he's not, he was, that was a horse. When we took the blinkers off him, he just settled down, left him alone. And he was able to take a deep breath and finish. And that was kind of the key factor to him. So. I remember talking to you first off the claim. You said he felt as though he was claustrophobic, even in his morning training. Yeah, he, he had little issues, nothing major, like I said, but the class is there, you know, so it was fantastic. He's a cool horse. He really is a cool horse. And Phil, this is your first horse you've ever owned. How amazing. First win in Saratoga. Yes, first win in Saratoga. I give David all the credit. He wanted him to relax early on and make one run, and that's exactly what Jose did. And I, I want to give a shout-out to my friend Johnny C., and my wife, Mary, who's the partner in Fillmar Stables. Thank you. <laughs> the Mar part. And uh, what made you pick this guy out? Obviously, D Dave, you said oh, back class, but w what was your thoughts on it? I could say that. We were sitting next to each other on Belmont Stakes Day, and I showed him the past performances for the next day, and I said, David, what do you think of this horse, Uncle Cy? And we claimed him the next day. It's worked out quite well. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. All right, Uncle Cy, the old class pulls through here, Greg. Yes, he does. Six-year-old gets the job done. Just his second win on the turf in 10 tries. He had a little bit of second-itis, especially on the turf, with five seconds and nine starts. But he breaks through this afternoon. 
and a huge day for jockey Jose Ortiz. And guys, worked out well for him today. It did work out well for him, and sometimes you have to get yeah. a little lucky and hope somebody else gets a bit unlucky in here. And Converge probably should have won because you could see when they break from the gate, I don't think Javier expected Converge yeah. to have as much speed as he did, and he was trying to make a decision, and we're looking at it early. He's sort of ranked behind horses, but you see it in the first turn. Now, he's getting to settle, and he's theoretically could have been in a good spot. Um behind the eight horse but he was having none of it and he went to the outside and i think javier just had no real choice there but to send him up he there and get him possession position and it almost worked out i think just the early rank this cost him the race yeah it actually gave the eight the assist right it actually sped up the pace a little bit because birchwood road if converge doesn't get rank on him a little bit but what's the cut of the corner right here i mean right inside the gray horse that jose ortiz made so he would have had to go outside the or the other horse, he loses the race. But for him to make that cut, Andy, I, I've been watching racing for a lot of time here at Saratoga. I know you're about 10 times you've watched races. You get stopped more times than not in this turf course than any other turf course. These kids are unbelievable. They don't. They make unbelievable split-second decisions, and they're the right ones all the and, time. And I think with Jose, everything is going so well with him that whatever decision he makes seems to turn out to be the right one. He is just an absolute difference maker, leading rider at the meet, trying to defend his title. He's got four wins on the afternoon. I want to remind everybody about this Naira Betts late pick five. The only way to play it if you reside outside the state of New York is with Naira Betts. So take advantage. It has been tremendous, the value that you have been getting with this play. So make sure you get down. And join up, sign up with Naira Betts and play the Naira Betts late pick five. It all started back in the fifth race. And this was a mile over the inner turf. And surprise, surprise, it was Jose Ortiz. Exactly. This was one of his four victories today. And this was for Christophe Clement actually just holding on at the wire on the cutback and the drop in class. Second leg of the sequence, entry level allowance, six and a half furlongs. Todd Pletcher had a filly who debuted back in January at Gulfstream. She ran huge. It was a while ago, but off the bench, she was ready. And last time we saw her and the only time we saw her was in January down at Gulfstream, but she was pretty quick out of the gate and took the field on a merry chase. Yeah, it was run and go, getting the job done. So Uncle Cy to this point has been the biggest price here in the sequence, 102,000 plus. In that Naira Betts late pick five pool. We'll see what can happen here the rest of the way. That last race appears to be somewhat more wide open, but you never know what you can get here. Compact four horse field in the Evan Shipman. Small fields sometimes you can get a big price. Exactly. Diversifies the four to five current favorite, but we'll see how it all shakes out. That last race is a bit of a puzzle. Of course, coming up this weekend, it is Travers Day. On Saturday afternoon, one of the most special days here of the meet. And trainer Todd Pletcher absolutely loaded. He will have Kentucky Derby winner always dreaming. Coming back for more. So brilliant in that race, the first Saturday in May. And, of course, the Jim Dandy did not go according to plan for him. No, it did not. Always dreaming uh, coming back in the Jim Dandy. But, you know, he always kind of said the Travers was his, uh, he had his sight set on the Travers. So uh, we'll see. He's got a backup plan or a couple of them as well. Taprit from the Belmont. Biggest win of his career for that three-year-old. And he's been trained up to the Travers. And Todd just kind of listening to the horse and, and thinking that, well, it didn't, he actually said it didn't really work out for Destin in the past. So he's taking a new approach with Taprit. And if, as if he needed more ammunition, a possible outplay stepped up and ran huge in the Curlin and ran so good. Todd says, I got to consider him for that race as well. He's been pretty lightly raced, but that surely was impressive. And he's pretty quick as well. So potentially three horses for the Travers. Here's Todd Pletcher's thoughts on the big race. Here outside Todd Pletcher's barn with Todd Pletcher as we discuss some of his uh, Travers probables. And we'll start off with Always Dreaming, Todd. And going back uh, to the Jim Dandy, obviously you said that your sights were set on the Travers. But in hindsight, what did you think of that performance? 
In hindsight, I think it was probably better than it seemed at the time, and mainly because the track was playing extremely slow at that the beginning of the meet. I think uh, you know I probably underdid his training a little bit. He had four breezes in between the Preakness and the Jim Dandy, and wasn't expecting to have quite as demanding of a surface as we as we had in the beginning of the meet. So. You know, I think that race should bring him forward from a conditioning standpoint and with two quality breezes since then. Hopefully he's rounding back into peak form. And shifting gears to always dreaming's workmate. Um, talk a little bit about outplay. You've uh, coming out of the Curlin last time out. He, too, has a, at least a local prep uh, here before the Travers. I thought he ran great in the Curlin. Uh, ran uh, every step of the way, set solid fractions and uh, finished with good energy. Didn't really come to Saratoga with the idea that we're going to the Travers, but uh, you know he's done well enough that we're we're having to strongly consider it. And uh, last but certainly not least, Taprit. Uh, from the get-go, you pretty much decided to train him into the Travers. What was the mindset uh, behind that after his Belmont victory? Well, I think part of it was drawn a little bit on on last year with with Dustin. You know, we felt like uh, you know he ran really well in the Belmont. Didn't didn't quite round back into shape for the Jim Dandy and then we left you know we kind of got to the Travers off peak so felt like he's the kind of horse that we could train accordingly and we know he's you know he's got a mile and a half race under his belt and backing up to a mile and a quarter from a fitness standpoint should be fine and we just felt like we didn't want to potentially come back too soon after the Belmont not fire our best shot in the Jim Dandy or the or the Haskell and then possibly not leave us in the best shape for the Travers. So I think hopefully by doing that, we're coming into the Travers ready to run his A race. Well, it looks like you've got a busy weekend on tap. Best of luck. Thank you. Well, here's a look at the possible Travers starters. Outplay the Curlin winner for Todd Pletcher. Potentially could go to the Pennsylvania Derby if he does not wind up in the Travers Saturday. And Todd did say this morning that he's going to confirm that tomorrow. So we'll know shortly. But look at this field, Greg. Unbelievable. Un we've got the Derby winner, the Preakness winner, the Belmont winner, the Jim Dandy winner. I, this is an unbelievable race. It's going to be a loaded starting gates. You don't want to miss it. Absolutely incredible. And there's only been two other times that a Derby Preakness and Belmont winner, all different horses, have all run in the Travers, 1982 and 1918. Don't forget the Haskell winner. Yeah, throw that one in for good measure as well with Gervin. We're going to take a break in the action. We'll be back our feature race, the Evan Shipman coming up next. Diversify. Trying to win it a mile and an eighth for the first time. We'll be back. Eclipse Award winner Blame retired to stud with more than $4.3 million in earnings, including a historic victory over Zenyatta in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now he's making a name for himself as an internationally successful stallion. In 2017, his top runners include stakes winner No Fault of Mine, Japanese star Resonator, and classic winner Singa, the dominant victor of this year's Grade 1 French Oaks, Blaine at Cleburne Farm. And they're off. Naira Bets Pick 5 is now available exclusively online at NairaBets.com. Bet the Naira Bets Pick 5 every race day with a 15% takeout. On the last five races on the card, from the country's best racing at Belmont and Saratoga. Find it nationwide at NairaBets.com, right in the Bet Type drop down menu, or at any Naira track or New York OTB location. Naira Bets Pick 5, racing's best bet.
Back on Saratoga Live, the coveted picnic tables. Run in early, claim your spot before it's gone. This is a look at the, the Adelphi Hotel on Broadway in downtown Saratoga Springs. Beautifully renovated, still finishing up, putting the finishing touches on it. It's been standing for over 150 years. Completely reimagined with a modern twist, still honoring the past. And right next door, Salt and Char, where the Travers Draw is going to happen Tuesday night. You're going to be there, right? Totally. I've been to Salt and Char so far this meet as well. Great porterhouse. It's delicious. Really? I'm going to have to try it. Can't wait. Yeah, that draw happens tomorrow night for the Travers. That's going to be uh, a fun event for sure. The Evan Shipman, of course, coming up next, our feature race here. Mile and an eighth can diversify, handle the mile and an eighth distance. The only time he tried it, I was in the stymie at Aqueduct over the inner dirt, and he was actually rolling along on the front end, and a horse named Dolphus came and pulled an Abel Tasman on a late move on him. Exactly. And this is a horse who, too, you know, Greg, in the beginning of his career, he looked like he was just a need the lead type of horse and he was just incredibly fast. But slowly with some of the races, including in the Saginaw last time out, we actually saw him successfully rate right from off the pace and start to develop, um, you know, the, the, the skill set to harness his speed. So he's definitely going to be on the lead here today. There's nobody quick enough to go with him. But the point I'm trying to make is at least he can harness his speed long enough to potentially get a mile and an eighth around two turns in here. Well, this is a look at the Saginaw, and he went head-to-head -head with Papa Shot in here, and Papa Shot was a really nice horse who just ran lights out on a track that had some moisture in it at Belmont, but he was no match for him on this occasion. No, and he was totally dominant in this race, and even in a couple starts prior, you're talking about horses like Weekend Hideaway, Rally Cry, Sunny Ridge, and I I, I like him in here. He's four to five. I'm going to try to get creative to beat him, but he is purely the horse to beat on speed and class. And that's why we see the short price, four to five in here. And guys, what do you do if you're everybody else here in this field? You know this horse is going to be out in front, probably alone by himself, but there's really not a whole lot to do here to try and, and, and reel him in. But he will have the target on his back. Yeah, well, he's faster than he's early. If he was my horse, Paul, I, I would let him roll. I'd open up. You're I one, uh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth because here's the deal. If they decide to slow the pace down to Versify and he tries to get into battle nutrition with the one he loses. I, I understand that Governor Malibu is not a win machine and not a win type, but if you keep him close enough, he'll pass him. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think you're supposed to say we got the best horse. We have the most speed. Mm. Let's control this race and let them play our game. Yeah. Not play their game and let them roll. I'm not saying he goes 22 45, no, but you. I don't see any reason not to go 23 and change, 47 and change. Make them keep up with him. This is a very fast horse, but I have to say the one question is that mile and eighth race in the stymie, it was a good field or not? He was disappointing that day. Yeah, now, the was. one governor, Malibu, it's a good draw for him getting the one because he is a horse that tends to log in. And yes, he doesn't keep getting the job done, but you could argue a mile and a half last time too far he ran extremely well in the commentator because that was a very very slow pace and paul nobody closed at all mm -hmm. in that race and he was shut off in the stretch he was shut off in the stretch he had to steady a tiny bit late in that stretch and then dove down to the rail you know what intrigues me about governor nalbu his gym dandy was his best race and he ran a better than fifth he was the only horse that made up any kind of ground running against obviously the world win of Arrogate on Travers Day. His two races here in Saratoga are very good, and I think he likes this racetrack. I got a lot of love for Governor Malibu. Maggie, you know I'm not giving up on him now. Andy, I echo the same sentiments when it comes to Governor Malibu. Yes, he doesn't find himself in the winner's circle often, but we still love him. He's still that overachieving New York bred that has danced every dance as far as his three-year-old races were concerned last year. Uh, this is the spot he belongs in. This is very logical for him, but like each and every time I've ever seen this horse physically, he always looks tremendous. I mean, I cannot fault him whatsoever. It's just how does he beat the loose on the lead number five, Diversify? And for me, Diversify, just to expound upon what Gabby was saying with this horse kind of learning, 
he's certainly thriving on racing. He, he really kind of comes in with this confident mental attitude and just game face, just pure concentration and confidence. And look, he is not facing the field that he faced in this timing where there isn't going to be that early pressure. And I think that he's the horse that should be able to get the mile and eighth. Physically, I've always thought that about him. Uh, and this is a perfect spot to do so to get this two turns here going the nine furlongs. But a horse that is kind of intriguing to me. I don't know if you guys were going to talk about him, but number two, Papa Shot, stretching back out in distance. Is there any shot that he could be a thorn in the side of number five, Diversify? That's the only one in here, right, Gabby, that looks like if anyone wants to try and put any pressure or even stay close to Diversify, could do it. Now the guys downstairs were mentioning Governor Malibu maybe showing um, some speed, but Papa Shot, I think he is the second fastest horse in the race. And if Linda Rice tries to get him out of there and and t contest Diversify, sure. Uh, clearly, he's not a horse that wanted to sprint last time out, and he got an appropriate setup. But that wasn't in his preferred distance, so we could maybe see him a little bit more aggressive. Jose Ortiz, as we mentioned, having a great day. Well, they went head to head before, guys, in the Saginaw. And Papa Shop was nowhere near diversify early on in that race. Yeah, he, he's likely to be sitting second. I mean, assuming everybody breaks from yeah. the game cleanly, you know, he's likely likely to be sitting second here. But I think it's one of these things where everybody's a little afraid of diversify. And if diversify once again is my horse, I I use that fear mm -hmm. to my advantage. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, last time he broke flat footed, Papa Shop. We're talking about the two. You go back to his other races at Finger Lakes. I think it was the competition that made him a lot faster early. His first race for Linder Ice, he showed some speed. But it seems like since he's gotten a little bit older, that he's been able to rate. Do you take him sort of out of his comfort style? I think Dickie lays second in here. There's just nobody else. He's going to be sitting second yeah. in all likelihood. And he is vastly improved for Linder Rice. And I'll tell you something else. I don't think it's just wet tracks. Because the July 2nd race, he ran very well to be second. But a relatively distant second behind Diversify. But you can argue he had a little bit of a layoff. Off, okay, Diversify mm -hmm. had had a couple races or a race. So um, if you're you're trying to beat a three to five shot, here you gotta try to figure out something. Pretty tough. Here's my double. I, I'm taking a shot. Listen, I think Governor Malibu the five. I'm taking a shot with the the three in the last because I know I'm gonna get a prize. So I don't care if I get the three to five here. I just think that Governor Malibu. I get it. Does not love to win races, but his best two races, even though they were seconds, were here at Saratoga. I love the governor. Three to one. I'm betting him to win. Do not make betting emotional. <laughs> I, Andy has always loved Governor <laughs> Malibu. I can remember him yelling at me when I didn't like him. I think it was going into, I don't know, the Jim Dandy Trav or something last year. And, well, I was right. You weren't right. What is this? She was right. <laughs> this is nonsense. Well, I'm Andy, I remember you going back to the Belmont and you loved him in that race, right? It, Gabby had Gabby didn't like him last year. I didn't like him the Belmont. I like Dustin, unfortunately. Gabby didn't like him because she didn't like his Tessio, as though that was representative of his form. That's fair. You have some nerve. <laughs> Here comes our post parade. Brought to you by OCD Pellets, celebrating their 10th anniversary of supporting the equine industry with their two-in-one bone and joint supplement. For more information, visit OCDPellets.com. Here he is, Governor Malibu for Jump Soccer Stable and Oak Bluff Stable, trained by Christophe Clement with Joel Rosario. He has to overcome the pace advantage Diversify, but I think he's the most talented horse in the race outside of Diversify. If anyone can beat him, it's him. Two seconds in three career starts here at Saratoga, trying to... Get back in the winner's circle for the first time since last year at Belmont in September. The two Papa shot sent out by Barry Schwartz, trained by Linda Rice, Jose Ortiz rides. This is the wild card horse put in a tough position here because does he uses early speed to keep diversify company, but it might cost him late. David Jacobson owns and trains. Good luck. Gus Paco Lopez will be aboard. Good luck. Good luck, Gus. <laughs> that about says it all for Mandy. Diversify, his speed will be dangerous. Trained by Rick Violet, owned by Ralph and Lauren Evans, and I ride Ortiz Jr. aboard. You know, I think this is a horse that doesn't get his due. He's 5 for 8 lifetime with two seconds, one of them to a Woodward contender rally cry. He is the speed and an hour of the horse to beat. Three to five, and I don't know if we're just making this race more difficult than it needs to be. Oh, you always try to play devil's advocate, right? And try to beat a three to five shot. So at least we try and we're taking a look at the one governor in Malibu. And I think that uh, he's probably the main w threat here. Yeah, he's a son of Malibu Moon. 
Another son of Malibu Moon, of course, is Orb, part of that stallion roster at Claiborne Farm. Had a $1 million co-sale topper at the recent Phasing Tipton Saratoga Select Yearling Sale. There he is on the farm in Paris, Kentucky. He had a 1.25 million two-year-old cold at OBS March, and we've seen Orbolution and Golden Orb, a couple of very intriguing two-year-old fillies by Orb, win here at this meeting at Saratoga. We're going to take a break in the action. More to come. Diversify. Distance test. Can he hang on at a mile and an eighth? He'll be alone in front in the Evan Shipman. How do I see New York bred performance? Like this. Disco. Here's New York sire Disco Partner setting a new world record in the Jiper. Holy mackerel! And they perform like multiple grade one winner, Mind Your Biscuits. Biscuits and he's pouring it on late. Shown here, winning the Belmont Sprint Championship. And New York Breads perform in the sales ring, where this filly sold for $750,000. Look for your registered New York performer at upcoming auctions. Make Naira Bets your home for online horse racing and betting. Use Naira Bets to bet on live horse racing from around the world. Bet from anywhere, anytime using your computer or mobile device. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Sign up at NairaBets.com and start earning your sign-up bonus today. Naira Bets, racing's best play. Use promo code PICK5 to get a $200 new member sign-up bonus on NairaBets.com. Back on Saratoga Live and the Evan Shipman, the Monday feature race is coming up and somebody up here wants to jump on the on the Gus bus here, the three horse at seven to one. Look, he's the longest price on the board, but I, you know, and he's been beaten by several of these horses many times in the past, but he's the only horse in the race who's won at this distance. And he's a two time winner here at Saratoga. And if Diversify can't get the distance, it's anybody's game and he's going to be closing late. Eight to one, we will see. And yeah, if the speed does fall apart, if the Diversify cannot handle the mile and eighth, it becomes a wide open race. We'll see what happens. Let's go downstairs to Maggie for more. Joined here in the box is by Steve Junker of Jump Sucker's Table and a Naira board member. And Steve, first let's get into you personally. I mean, you retired from Goldman Sachs at the age of 43. You're a guy who just loves action, horses, Poker. Yeah. Talk to me about your 2004 main table, main event table, World Series of Poker. It was really a lot of fun. There's nothing like the main event. But the one dip big difference in racing is here it's two minutes and huge excitement there. You play 13 hours a day. And it's more just trying to stay awake and not make mistakes at the end of the day. But uh, poker is a great thrill. I, I still play a lot in Florida. I played in the circuit event of the World Series of Poker this winter. and uh, But horse racing is my first love. So... And talk a little bit about horse racing. I, I had to ask you, I know it's not your doing, but Jump Sucker, it always has intrigued me of where that name came from. So one of our partners, George Walker, played a game on a boat where if you lose, you have to jump sucker off the boat. So uh, one night he said, uh, let's name our stable that. And I said, look, George, if you want to put your money up, we'll, we'll name the stable the way you want to name it. So that's how we got it. Well, your stable's doing awfully well as too. Um, was there ever a story, they were just telling me my, in my ear that you won a horse in a game of poker? So that was a back, <laughs> that's, that's, that is true, but it was in a backgammon game. Uh, okay. uh, one of my fraternity brothers 
I was a little bit better backgammon player than he was and ended up winning 10% of a horse named Bates Motel, who went on to be the champion four-year-old a few years later. So uh, that was that's the kind of story that you say, oh my gosh, look at that great story, but not, not many end that way. That is amazing. That's really one of the coolest stories. Really quickly though, Governor Malibu, what about his chances here? Well, look, I, I think he should be the second choice. I think Diversify is a very deserving favorite, controlling speed in the race. And we know Governor Malibu will stay the distance. So maybe he'll come running at the end and get the win. Who knows? Right, Steve, fine. good luck here. Greg? Maggie, thank you. We shall see Governor Malibu coming up. Welcome to Saratoga Live. It is presented by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. Welcome to those just joining us on Altitude Network. Our feature race, the Evan Shipman, is coming up. You can get signed up and started and play along by going to NairaBets.com. If you get signed up and bet 200, you'll get 200 in your account by using that promo code PIG5. You can get signed up with Naira Bets all across the country. Greg Wolf, Gabby Gaudette here upstairs on the roof as we get set for this feature race coming up. That is a look at Good Luck Gus, who we were just talking about before our Altitude audience joined us. But Gabby, certainly it is all about diversifying here. It'll be the controlling speed, the five horse. It's just the question of whether he can get the mile and an eighth distance. And it's a good question, but usually if we see a horse go to the lead and be able to set uh, kind of slower fractions, they can run as far as they want to. So diversify, not only does he have the main speed in here, but he also has a class. I got. I have a thought here. We were talking about good luck, Gus. Just a thought. David Jacobson's a crafty guy. He knows if he sits back and just sits in fourth, he's got to get awfully lucky. I wonder if they're going to try to be a little aggressive with him, especially with Paco Lopez. You know, and Gaddy made a good point. The only horse is one of the distance, two wins that, here at Saratoga. Maybe that's the only way they can win this race, maybe catch Diversify by surprise. If you're the rider of Diversify, if somebody decides to send, I, I wouldn't think you want to get into a pace. You've got to still think you're the best horse. I don't think anybody can keep up with yeah, Diversify. Right. Yeah. He's too fast for these horses early. The question, does somebody engage to maybe at least get position? Someone's going to have to quicken him up for at least an eighth of a mile to take that sting out of him. Because, listen, the worry with him is is the mile and eighth. Can somebody take the sting out of him early? And then that includes Governor Malibu. But again, does Governor Malibu really love to win races? Yeah, that's a good question there, Paul. Three for 16 lifetime. It's been a while since he's won, going back to July, or even, I should say, even further than that, going back to September of last year at Belmont. But three to five favoritism on Diversify. You look at his only three defeats. He reeled off four in a row to start his career. He got beat in the Stami. That was the mile and eighth race. And then he got beat by a horse named Rally Cry, who we saw just freak here at Saratoga, and we're going to see in the Woodward against Gunrunner. And Rally Cry has had a lot of starts and stops throughout his career, but I know Todd has always thought extremely highly of him, and he's a horse that's been incredible for him, even Sunny Ridge, Weekend Hideaway. Uh, he's been against quality horses here, Greg, and you, you can't, I mean, we try to play devil's advocate. He's one to two, but anything can happen here at Saratoga. He is a serious racehorse, though. Five for eight in his career, but he does have to answer the question of getting that extra 16th of a mile here coming up. But he'll be the controlling speed. All eyes will be on him. And Irad Ortiz Jr., who knows his goal, break clean, get to the front, see if he can keep on going here at a short price. Well, it'll be interesting to see if anybody else gets uh, aggressive coming out of the gate and tries to run with Diversify. If they do, it might not bode too well. well we talked about really the only one who we thought could do that is the two Papa shot here. He showed speed at Finger Lakes, showing speed at Finger Lakes, a little different proposition than doing it here at Saratoga against this level of competition. It is, but it was also going a mile, you know, and this horse was went six and a half furlongs last time out, now stretching immediately out to nine furlongs. He's going to be pretty quick. Diversify without question. The horse to catch and the horse to beat. Let's send it upstairs to the voice of the Triple Crown for the call, Larry Colmus. Good luck, Gus and Paco Lopez, the... Long shot in the field going into the starting gate. The favorite, Diversify, and Arad Ortiz Jr. will take the outside stall. One to two on Diversify as he steps forward and in. 
And they're all in line. They're off in the oven, Shipman. And Diversify goes straight out to the early lead. Sharp out of the gate, Narad Ortiz Jr. takes him to the top into that first turn and clears, opening up a two-length lead on the other three right together. Governor Malibu racing on the inside of Papa Shot, while Good Luck Gus goes three wide on that turn. So they make their way around the clubhouse turn, and it is the front-running favorite here, Diversify, in charge to a 23.59 first quarter. Governor Malibu is three lengths behind in second. Good Luck Goss is third to the outside, and Papa Shot is taken back to trail now and races seven lengths off of front-running Diversify. Diversify's lead is three. It is Governor Malibu who's running along in second. Good Luck Goss third to the outside. And Papa Shot's a bit closer now, four and a half lengths off the lead after a 47.35 half mile. So they make their way toward the half mile pole here. Diversify heads the Evan Shipman field into the far turn with a two length lead on Governor Malibu. Good luck, Gus, coming under a ride. Papa Shot continues to race at the back. Around the far turn, it is Diversify who has gone three quarters in 111.09. Opening up a two-length lead on Governor Malibu, and they've put themselves well ahead of the others. As Papa Shot draws even with good luck, Gus, but they're far behind as they come to the top of the stretch. They're into the stretch, and Arad Ortiz Jr. sets down Diversify with a four-length lead on Governor Malibu. And as he comes by the eighth pole, Diversifies lengthening that lead with each and every stride. He's far too good for his foes here. Governor Malibu is second best, and the others are well out of it as they come to the line. A very sharp effort by Diversify today, taking the Evan Shipman over Governor Malibu. Papa Shot was third. The final time was very fast, 1 minute 47.48 seconds. Extremely quick final time, and Diversify, he can't handle a mile and an eighth, especially when he gets things his own way. This is incredible. I mean, this horse went 23 and 3, basically. Another 23 and 3 quarter. He went 23 and 3 again. Then he went another t under 24 yeah, his next nice. quarter, and he came home in 12 and 2 fifths. I gotta tell you, gun runner, step aside. We got a New York bred monster out there in Diversify. This is some performance. No, it was a very good performance. And you got to give Joel Rosario credit. He pushed up on the rail in the beginning to try to stay intact to this horse. And he was under a complete drive the whole way, Gabby. There's just no doubt about it. And he makes a good point. You cut off those kind of fractions and then come home sub 23. Pretty darn good effort. I was mentioning that to Greg during the running of the race. I said, you know what? Joel Rosario is giving Governor Malibu every chance to win this race and try to get him in the game early. But he was just second best and second best by a significant margin. Diversify, this was a serious race. And, and I kid about gun, gun Runner, but I'll tell you something. This is the second most impressive distance performance we've seen at Saratoga this year. He is one heck of a racehorse. He's yeah. not just a New York bred. He is a darn good horse. You make a good point. You know, he's been a four-year-old. He's gotten a ton better. Diversify, big-time effort. I'm sure that, number one, the tops the list. Andy's talking about the Whitney from Gunrunner, but this one a close second and a big effort from a horse who is now six for nine in his career. We're going to take a break. Now the history and tradition and looking to the future with Claiborne Farm after their huge Alabama Saturday. Grade one winner Data Link by world renowned sire Warfront. Data Link scored in the prestigious grade one Makers 46 mile at Keeneland. Then set a new course record in the grade two Monmouth Stakes. With a pedigree free of Mr. Prospector in the first four generations, Data Link is the perfect outcross option. His first weanlings turned heads, selling well above the stud feet. Data Link at Claiborne Farm. How do I see New York bread performance? Like this. Disco. Here's New York sire Disco Partner setting a new world record in the Jiper. Holy mackerel! And they perform like multiple grade one winner, Mind Your Biscuits. Biscuits and he's pouring it on late. Shown here, winning the Belmont Sprint Championship. And New York Breads perform in the sales ring, where this filly sold for $750,000. Look for your registered New York performer at upcoming auctions. And they're off. Naira Bets Pick 5 is now available exclusively online at NairaBets.com. Bet the Naira Bets Pick 5 every race day with a 15% takeout. 
on the last five races on the card from the country's best racing at Belmont and Saratoga. Find it nationwide at NairaBets.com, right in the Bet Type drop down menu, or at any Naira track or New York OTB location. Naira Bets Pick 5, racing's best bet. You're watching Saratoga Live and headed to the winner's circle in the featured Evan Shipman. It is Diversify. Now six wins from nine career starts. Gate to wire in a very fast 147 and two for this mile and an eighth. Owned by Ralph and Lauren Evans. Irad Ortiz Jr. aboard for the winning ride. Let's send it downstairs to Maggie. <laughs> Here with winning trainer Rick Violet, diversify Rick. Boy, he stamped himself as a legit kind of New York bred. Not only that, but also a legit kind of uh, handicap type of horse with that performance. He, he really did. You know, sometimes he waits on horses, and that's why Irad stayed a little busy on him because he can kind of his head come up and wait, and then he he might re-break a little bit. But boy, today he just ran through the wire. He really did, and the development of this horse. You know, you go back to, he's only had three losses, and you kind of make excuses. He's been beat by very nice horses, but it seems as though you've got him firing on all cylinders and that he's thriving on his racing. I mean, he certainly loves it up here. He does like a little spacing between his races. If His best, you know, his most brilliant races seem to come with that extra two or three weeks, so uh, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> and with that in mind, do you look at a race like the Jockey Club Gold Cup, or do you stick with New York, Brad? That's a mile and a quarter. I, I you know, um, we might do, I mean, we wouldn't even mind backing up to a mile, but that's a that's another big leap and against a much different kettle of fish, a pretty nice horse. So we'll sit down with Mr. Evans and his daughter and, and come up with a game plan. If he's eligible for, you know, a three out of four other than New York, Brad, something, we might sneak him in there. <laughs> <laughs> Take the money and run, Rick. Job well done. Enjoy this win, though. Thank you so much. All right, guys. All about diversify. Take a shot. Go for the big money. Yeah, why not? After that performance. Huge performance from Diversify. Well, they got a lot of options with this horse, no question. New York Racing Association is the leader in providing Spanish language content. Luis Grandison provides pre-race analysis. It's all available on the Naira Now app and in HD. Of course, Luis also provides race-by-race -race calls. Here's Elate's Alabama win from this past weekend. Ha dominado Elate, ha dominado por dos cuerpos de la Habana. Y Tiswell está segundo. El comando lo mantiene Elate. Con José Ortiz ha dominado claro por cuatro o cinco cuerpos. William Hunter y José Ortiz están ganando el Alabama fácil con el ejemplar Elate. Segundo está finalizando y Tiswell. Tercero está arribando Salty. That was Elate's five and a half length victory over It Tiswell and Salty, her first graded stakes win. And the silks of Adele Dillschneider, and of course owned in part by Claiborne Farm. What a performance. Third Alabama victory for trainer Bill Mott. There is Adele Dillschneider without the shoes heading into the winner's circle. Great moment. And of course, Claiborne Farm and the Claiborne Silks getting a win earlier on the Alabama card with Chastise at 21 to 1. No history of horse racing can be told without telling the story of the tradition of Claiborne Farm.
So I'm fifth generation. We started in Virginia uh, shortly after the Civil War, and then we moved here to Kentucky where we are today uh, in 1910. It was more breed to race, you know, it was kind of a mom and pop kind of thing and everyone, the intention was to, uh, to see who had the fastest horse. Back in the day, they said, I have horses, you have horses, let's see which ones are faster and they'd go out to the field and, and uh, race them. Uh, that's how it all got started and that's, you know, certainly, it's morphed into what it is today over the years. It's kind of like Disneyland for horses. It's a special place and, you know, the history behind it and the horses that have been raised here and that are here now, it's a special place, I think, for a lot of people. And, and it shows in the number of tours that we do every day, especially starting in about April through October. You know, there'll be 30 to 50 people through here twice a day for tours. So, you know, it kind of tells you what this place is. You know, I started working on the farm when I was eight years old. There's pictures of me at the sales leading around the mare and I'm eight years old in 1997. So uh, it's kind of been in my blood the whole my whole life and it's something I knew I always wanted to do. My dad told me it's certainly something I didn't have to do but I was never really questioned because I wanted to do it. So it was an easy decision. I mean, Walker's raised here, grown up here. Uh, he's a great young man and his father, his parents have done a tremendous job with him. So, you know, it's kind of like the horses that have been raised here. He was bred and raised here to, to do what he's doing. I mean, we really haven't changed. We try and have a sim uh, simplistic attitude towards everything, and everyone does their job, and that's why our slogans, you know, do the usual and usually well, with just everyone has their own job and does it to the best of their ability. Right now, I think we have 220 mares maybe here, and then we'll have 140 foals on the ground. We'll have 44 yearlings. We're prepping for September sale next month. Well, war fronts are our highest priced stallion. Uh, obviously, he's known internationally. One of the leading sires in the world. He stands for 250,000, and you know, he started at 12.5, and he's worked his way up and gotten runners on the dirt and the turf at, at the highest level. Mastery. We haven't announced a stud fee yet, but we're really excited about him. Um, he's such a brilliant three-year-old this year. Unfortunately, got hurt and wasn't really able to showcase his true talent. He had listened to Bob Baffert. He might have been just as talented as American Pharaoh. So at least one of my personal favorite horses. Uh, it was nice to follow his career that closely. And he has some fantastic looking babies, so we're, we're excited about him. I think that Claiborne Farms probably focused on the whole package from beginning to end. You know, I mean, it starts with the stallions and the mares and then the offspring and how you raise the offspring and how the offspring then are moved from Claiborne Farm to be broken to the trainers. And, you know, the whole process is what you know, I think it's just a function of always paying attention to the details and making sure everything's done the right way and for the, for the best of the interest of the horse. Going back to the original concept of my horse is faster than your horse, it's kind of fun just to line them up and see who's faster. So, yeah, the, the racing part really uh, excites me. Watching Dad my whole life and just how he's a hard worker and honest with people and what he says is his word and he's not going to change it. So really just kind of picking up on his, his, uh, his way of life and just being a good role model for me and to follow in his footsteps, something I'm trying to do. We're true to our simplistic values. That's what's got us here this far, so why change them? But it is a challenge to stay up with the times and uh, evolve and uh, hold true to your, to your values. So we're trying to find that balance. People ask me what are my goals for Claiborne Farm, and it's really just to hand it off to someone else and keep it going, and if I do that, Obviously, we've been somewhat successful for still around, and uh, it's still going well. Oh, those legendary silks of Claiborne Farm, just amazing that the horses that are buried on their grounds, the likes of Secretariat, Easy Goer, Danzig, Bold Ruler, Gallant Fox, Mr. Prospector, the list goes on and on. Incredible tradition of Claiborne Farm, and again, winning the Alabama over the weekend with a late. Coming up this weekend, could be a stiff test for Songbird and the personal ensign going head to head with a very, very talented distaffer. We'll have that next. How do I see New York bred performance? 
like this. Disco. Here's New York sired disco partner setting a new world record in the Jiper. Holy mackerel! And they perform like multiple grade one winner, Mind Your Biscuits. Biscuits and he's pouring it on late. Shown here, winning the Belmont Sprint Championship. And New York Breads perform in the sales ring, where this filly sold for $750,000. Look for your registered New York performer at upcoming auctions. Change the way you watch racing forever with the new Naira Now app. Live racing in English or Spanish. From a variety of camera angles, race replays, talking horses, race analysis, and a multitude of on-demand content, all in high definition. Naira Now is available on many platforms, including iOS, Android, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and more coming soon. Download Naira Now today, free in the App Store, and start watching the best racing like never before. Back on Saratoga Live here at the summer place to be, the premier race meet in all the country. Saratoga here in Saratoga Springs, New York. Show is brought to you in part by Champion Sprinter Run Happy. He won at six different racetracks during the course of his career. Undefeated in sprint competition. That was his win in the Malibu. He became the only male this century to win a Breeders' Cup race on dirt without running on Lasix. There he is, standing for $25,000 at Claiborne Farm in Paris, Kentucky, and we will see his first babies coming along soon. Really looking forward to it. He was a very fast horse, and he took his form really everywhere he went. 17 minutes away from our nightcap coming up here on this Monday afternoon. We thought we'd look back to this very day 99 years ago, and this is a horse named Romer. There had been a mile record that had stood for 28 years by a horse named Salvatore. Set it on a straight track at Monmouth, 135 and 1. Set it back in 1890. But then Romer, the seven year old gelding, who was a former Travers winner, by the way, said, We're going to tackle that and take it on and do it around turns. Carried the same exact weight as Salvatore had 28 years earlier to make it fair. And they used a pace setter named Lightning. The only problem was in the race, Romer was so quick, almost immediately after the, he started, went right on by Lightning, and then he was all by himself. So it was up to jockey Andy Schuttinger to carve out those fractions and make sure he could get it done. And he did, breaking the world record. Incredible performance doing that back in the summer of 1918. 
Not bad. Not bad. And those were some of his wins there, Greg. In 1913, Saratoga special winner. He won the Carter, the Travers, Saratoga handicap. He won a lot of races. He was a pretty special horse. Cool story. 39 wins. He only won $98,000. Times have changed, <laughs> haven't they? I'd say. Nightcap, here is the field. And yet again, we have a Chad Brown couple of class droppers uh, coming up in this field. Performance bonus, though, coming out against Facing Tougher. That is the one horse who is at 7 to 2 on the board. Neither of those two, however, right now are favored. That is Conquest Sandman right now for Mike Maker. That's kind of surprising. Uh, the one thing it, that this horse does have in his favor is that he has a little bit of tactical speed. But Chad Brown, with this type of move, dropping in horses first time for the tag, he does it, and he does it well. So he's got two horses to beat in here. Yeah, and the odds, guys, that it's it's not going to happen with him making this move twice in one day, pretty slim. Well, he's got two horses, both of them, the one and yeah. ten, both first time for a tag. It, it It's an interesting race because... And we'll get to the five and eight, but the two speed horses are both trained by Mike Maker. And I think one of the jobs for Javier Castellano, Paul, is riding the one performance bonus. He's got to try to use speed that he used to have to get position yeah. going forward so he's not compromised if the Maker horses sort of control it up front and keep the pace too slow. Yeah, you know, and I think Javier rode him like that last time. He got beat by Get Jets. I think it was one to five or three to five that heavy day, favorite. Andy. Yeah, he was a heavy favorite. And he was second best. He took a shot at Get Jets, and he ended up running third. And I thought Javier rode him aggressively. I think he, do, he does the same in here. You see the one Parks when it was off the turf. It was more gate to wire. But I'm with you. I think he, he jumps out of the gate. He's got plenty, uh, way more speed than the two, three, and four in here. Well, it, it, we'll see. I think that Javier is going to get him into that position. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. And also, that was a race last time that sort of fell apart. Um, we go to the 10 horse, the other horse for Chad Brown. I don't know. I think that performance bonus is the better of the two and is more has a better post. Mm -hmm. Trick Top's got to overcome that outside post, and he has very little speed. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like the other Chad Brown, and the reason why is Chad very doesn't tinker a lot. He put blinkers on this horse two back, trying to figure him out. And then last time out, he shipped him to Mammoth. He won. There was a lengthy inquiry in that race. Joe lugged in a tiny bit. I think the horse was trying to lean into the rail. He got a little tired. He made a giant move in the race. He just got a little tired late, but he got the money that day. He was trying to hang a little bit, and I can understand why Chad probably put the blinkers on two back. But I'm with you. I think the one is a better proposition than the other entry. Well, there, there's a number of different players in this race. One, uh, probably a long shot, is Semblance of Order, Maggie. Andy, I, I'm usually very serious in my assessments, but for just one second of this one day, I'm going to be a total horse girl. And you just got to marvel in the, the handsome that is number four, uh, a semblance of order. It has about the most striking foretop of a horse I've ever seen, which is the hair that hangs down in front of their face. So I, I just had to gloat over that for a second as we'll get into serious business here and take a look at number eight, Conquest Sandman, who turns back in distance from the nine furlongs to the eight here and coming off a little bit of a layoff you know he always struck me as a horse that's this big kind of galloping type so while he's been okay at this kind of distance i wouldn't mind seeing him going a bit further uh, he looks good enough here does he look like the overwhelming favorite which he is you know three to one so he's not that short of a price but no i, I prefer the horse towards his outside in number 10 tricked up yes Polly brings up great points in that Chad has kind of been tinkering with this horse. His overall ability kind of comes into question. But for me today, this is the best I've seen him look overall. Looks as though Saratoga is agreeing with him, and he drops in for the tag for the first time. And then we'll check in with a horse coming off of a layoff. That's number three, Banker's Holiday for Joe Sharp. Returns now as a least listed as a new gelding here. He looks really well defined, really fine tuned for this effort coming back here off of that September layoff. And really, prior to going on the bench, he was in the best form of his life. So if he can get back to that at all, I think he might have a say here um, as he currently sits at six to one. Greg Jocks are out. We'll be sending him postward in a moment. Maggie, thanks. We'll have that post parade coming up when we return from a short time out here on Saratoga Live. Finale is coming up as we get a look at Banker's Holiday, the first time gelding on the board at six to one here. Chased a graded stakes winner last time out. We'll be back with more performance bonus, dropping class for Chad Brown.
make Naira Bets your home for online horse racing and betting. Use Naira Bets to bet on live horse racing from around the world. Bet from anywhere, anytime using your computer or mobile device. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Sign up at NairaBets.com and start earning your sign-up bonus today. Naira Bets, racing's best play. Use promo code PICK5 to get a $200 new member sign-up bonus on NairaBets.com. Back on Saratoga Live, our post parade here for the Monday finale is coming up one mile over the inner turf. 50,000 claiming race for horses who have not won three lifetime. By the way, we had a Chad Brown class dropper earlier in the card converged. That horse actually was claimed out of that race by Mark Hennig. And the winner of that race, Uncle Cy, was claimed by Ray Handel. We'll see what happens here in this race. Performance bonus, one of two in the field for trainer Chad Brown, Klarovich Stables, and Javier Castellano aboard performance bonus. Yeah, this is a horse I think when they spring the gates will end up being your favorite. Solid third last time out when chasing a heavy favorite. Tipsy Kitten, the two. It's first off the claim for Rudy Rodriguez, Florent Giroux aboard for E5 Racing Thoroughbreds a logical spot to place this horse just a lot of heavy hitters dropping in class which makes him 20 to 1 in this spot here's the first time gelding bankers holiday his five-year-old debut for joe sharp yeah i like this one today the blinkers have gone on after a monstrous turf effort here the worry the layoff there is semblance of order jenna antonucci and it is ricardo santana jr aboard his last victory was in june of 2015 has not managed to wake up since Try and wire the field. The game plan with taste for talent. Katie Clausen aboard for Mike Maker. His horse was pushed along last time out and went pretty fast for the six furlongs, but just kept on moving at eight to one. Could be a player in here. Worst strolls, the seven angel Arroyo for M&M Racing and trained by Robertino Diodoro. Sort of got taken out of his style last time, right? They went a little bit longer and he went to the front end. Here's a horse that probably going to lay back today and make one run. There's another Mike Maker runner. The eight conquest Sam Man with John Velasquez. Mike Maker sends out two speed types. This one potentially a little bit more tactical. Rudy Rodriguez trains acoustic for Michael Dubb. Joel Rosario rides. Horse is in good form. A second, first, third, and a second in the last four starts, but needs to improve a little bit. Tricked up is the 10 with Manny Franco, the other Chad Brown runner here for Robert LaPenza and Sheep Pond Partners. Has to work at a trip from the outside and is a closer, uh, but should be able to get a decent pace flow in front. And do not forget the 12 Tusk, drained by Graham Motion for Flaxman Holdings with Jose Ortiz. He spent some time on the West Coast. He came back with a victory at Laurel. The drop may wake him up. All right, it's the get out race. How do we play this finale here, Paul? Yeah, I like the three guys. And, you know, when you look back about four races ago we are live in the double we got a three to five shot but four races ago at saratoga in, in july of last year this horse was giant was much the best then joe sharp put blinkers on him he won on a sloppy racetrack his last two efforts were against way better when they had those monstrous purses at kentucky downs now the drop now gelding you're getting six to one i love the price in here i think the horse has got a good shot to get some pace to run into 
I'm going to take another horse in the race. I'm, I'm interested in the seven-horse horse draw. I, I don't think he's the best horse in the race necessarily. What I think he is is a live price. It's a very, very competitive race. Robertino Diodoro has obviously done terrific claiming since coming to New York. Yeah, he he does overall. He doesn't have as good numbers with his claims in the turf, and he hasn't had success in New York in the turf. But he's claimed a horse that has very good form in the turf. He's just not a mile and three ace horse. They ran him in a tough spot last time, and it was a one that a pace completely fell apart yeah. last time, and it makes him look worse than he is. And that's why he's a big price, so I'm happy to take a shot with him, and I'll fool around in exactas as well, Gabby. Oh, well, you and I are seeing eye to eye on this one. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, he's a horse, like you said, showed a little bit of improved speed in his uh, most recent two starts. I love the tur cutback and distance to the mile. He was very good going seven and a half furlongs down at Gulfstream over the winter, and obviously that is a two-turn horse. He was going against graded stakes quality horses like Conquest Panthera. He recently won a grade two up at Woodbine, so I think the cutback here is going to be key. And Diodoro finally got on the board uh, earlier last week as well. Let's not forget, though, in from the also eligible list, that Graham Motion runner. That is Tusk to the outside at 7-1 to one with more on this runner. Let's go to Maggie. Greg, I think Tusk is very intriguing and interesting here in this race as he does draw in, as you said, and just one that the more I watched him, the more I liked him. He was good in the paddock, uh, made a good impression, but underneath Jose Ortiz and I just have to compliment Jose Ortiz and the way that he warms a horse up. He gives a horse every chance to loosen up, to get those muscles working the, the way they need to. He lets them gallop out off from the pony, and then he does some uh, kind of bending exercise at a jog. So I, I always love the way he warms horses up. I love what I'm seeing from Tusk, and I like the mild distance for him. I like the fact that he's been okay since coming back to the East Coast here, and I think he can build upon that as he runs for the tag here for the 50 thousand Greg so Gabby seven to one on Tusk here for Grand Motion what do you think when he came to Laurel I actually had a discussion with Grand Motion and talking about him and he said when they shipped him out to the west coast they were trying him against really quality allowance company and not breaking through so they wanted to bring him back here to find lighter company and boost his confidence but look in his past two starts Graham has taken him to Laurel and Monmouth he hasn't broken through at the two other than level so it just seems like a logical move for this horse to drop in class meanwhile Mike Maker has two runners in the race I, I think the five is the quicker of the two but Conquest Sandman on occasion has shown some pace as well when gate to wire two starts back at a mile and a sixteenth and yes, he is a better horse, I think, when he's on the lead, but he also can be a little bit more tactical. And with Taste for Talent, the number five with a five pound apprentice in here, I have got to think that they're going to go with him. And Conquest Sandman's probably going to sit just off of him. I agree that the five does appear to be a, a bit quicker, but I'm not sure how tactical Conquest Sandman is because he has two career wins, and one was sitting just yeah, off a leader in a synthetic race, and the other one was wiring a good field but in a slow pace at Belmont. So that's why I was saying that I need the one needs to get in there and be aggressive early, else it ends up being a situation where the five's in front and the eight's just stalking close by in a moderate pace, and the eight takes Clover as the better horse and runs away with a race Yeah, ball. this is a race that could be tricky because are they playing possible? Awesome here. What if the five doesn't go, Greg? And what if the eight does, or and vice versa? Yep. One or the other is going to be tough. Whichever one gets away, they're not going to battle each other. So Andy makes a good point. The one's got to push up in there. I do think Banker's Holiday to three will show a little bit more speed, but not enough speed uh, uh, to stay close. But to you know, make a good point there. If one of these five or eight get away, they're going to be tough. No doubt. Eight to one on the five, seven to two on the eight. And take a look there at that sign up bonus going on. Get signed up and started with Naira Betts. If you bet 200, you'll get 200 in your account when you use the promo code PICK5. You get signed up and play with Naira Betts all across the country. And of course, you can get down to that Naira Betts late pick five by playing with Naira Betts as well. Here's a look at one of the two for Chad Brown performance bonus. He faced a horse named Get Jets last time out who wound up being second in the Forbidden Apple to Disco Partner, who was our world record holder at six furlongs. Exactly. You're talking about a horse who's been competing against a different caliber of horses as of late. But 
he's five years old. He's only had 10 career starts. There's been a lot of spotty form in the time between. I know he's well posted, but I kind of like the other Chad Brown runner in here a little bit more than he. Um, but he surely has the credentials to win. I just don't like how spotty his form has been in the past year. Are we all in agree? We all of the two Chad Brown runners prefer the bigger price in here tricked up the 10? I don't. Well, I'm vice versa. I know you guys like the 10 a little bit. I, The horse was loaded at the top of the lane and leaned in late for me. I think the one's a better horse than the 10 and the post position. But Gabby makes a good point that the 10 might get the pace. Does the one sit the trip? Well, I think it's going to be a question of how they ride him. I don't know. You know, I have to think that Javier Castellano and Chad Brown have looked at the race and realized the one's best chance to get into position. Because I think there's really a, 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 a real scenario where the five and eight, the two maker horses, yeah. sort of control the race. And it's almost like the eight's the better horse. He's riding kind of shotgun, and he can just take over from the five. And if they go slow, it's going to be hard for them to close. We'll see. We'll see who else is thinking that way. And again, this is going to be contested here over the inner turf course, Gabby, where speed has been oh so dangerous here at this meet. Well, that's another feather in the cap for both Mike Maker horses. And it is. It's going to be an interesting pace dynamic. The Maker duo definitely have the most speed. We're just about set. They're loading up here. And it is the Chad Brown runner, the one performance bonus, who is the three to one favorite. He also has the 10 tricked up. Let's send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing, Larry Colmes, for the call of this finale from Saratoga. Tricked Up has taken his spot in line that leaves Tusk and Jose Ortiz up to the outside stall. Tusk is in, and we're all in line. They're off. And it was a very even beginning here. It's Tipsy Kitten on the inside, out well. Taste for talent on the outside with early speed. These two will take them into the turn together with War Stroll right behind them. Semblance of Order is running in fourth on the inside, moving into the turn. Conquest Sandman is next, and way wide on that turn was Tipsy Kitten. Did not handle the turn, and getting carried out was Taste for Talent. The two of them very wide on that turn, and they're turning it on onto the backstretch after a 23.47 quarter. They're right together. War Stroll is two lengths behind them, running in third by another four then Semblance of Order, followed by Conquest Sandman, Performance Bonus, and on the outside comes Tricked Up. After that is Tusk, who is third last up the backstretch ahead of Banker's Holiday and Acoustic as they continue through the first half mile in pursuit of dueling leaders, Tipsy Kitten and Taste for Talent, who went 46.53 for a half. And War Stroll continues to be a length and a half behind them. Then Semblance of Order on the inside of Conquest Sandman. Behind them, performance bonus and tricked up. The stablemates are side by side on the turn, and they're six lengths off the lead, just ahead of Banker's Holiday. Tusk on the inside, an acoustic, and they're coming toward the top of the stretch. War Stroll runs for the lead on the outside. Slipping through an opening at the rail is Tusk with the run. Here's Tusk and Jose Ortiz charging up the rail. They got through. War Stroll goes with Tusk, and these two are one two now. Performance bonus and then semblance of order. It's Jose Ortiz again. Whoa, what a day. A five-win day, and what a ride in the nightcap on Tusk. Pulling away in the end to beat War Stroll. It was close for third. The final time was 1 minute 34.36 seconds. A five-bagger for Jose Ortiz asserting himself here on this Monday afternoon. Tusk closes things out for trainer Graham Motion. Gentlemen, racing allowed here. Seven to one. What a great ride here by Jose Ortiz. He was loaded most of the way, and the two-horse got tired here late. The seven was giant. Up on the pace, hung around. Good call by you and Gabby, but listen, Tusk got the best trip here. Absolutely. I mean, drew off the also eligibles to beat me. There's always so many ways to lose, but <laughs> a good ride or not, he was also best in there and Jose's just making every right move right here Gabby right here you can see he's loaded on the rail and all he has to worry about is the two exactly and we saw the two kind of sneak off the rail a little bit congratulations to Maggie as well she liked Tusk too and he was just loaded at the top of the stretch but Jose Ortiz this is a textbook ride a picture perfect ride in here as well got the pace flow in front and class relief for Grand Motion definitely helped this horse as well well, the race was really 
uh, was sort of compromised by the two tipsy kitten because in the first turn that horse sort of bore out kind of took the five out of the race the seven the ride in the seven was actually exceptional by angel royal because he cut in and yeah, saw the problem his instinctive re reaction there was very very strong but i i was at Giroux on the two i don't know if the two just got away from yeah, him. It just kind of him. messed up the whole race i don't know what happened the ace or the eight early yeah because what ends up happening when you're going 46 that's moving on this race i know that it's okay but you could see Ortiz go out the rail with the white face, the little gray, and the seven is trying her heart out. Now, look what the seven had to do. Had to go around the two and all that stuff and is still able to battle on. It's just Tusk is, is gone at this point. A couple horses launching from way back, but there's no match. It's the gray face looking like a little baby arrow gate getting the job done. Nice call, Paul. Warstroll took a little bit of a bad step there mid-stretch, but it did not matter. Tusk was going to win this race here in that stretch duel. Much the best here. Seven to one to close out the card. Five win day for jockey Jose Ortiz, the defending leading jockey here at the meet. And on top of the standings, yet again here, looking awfully strong. He's going to be tough to beat here. 12-7, 4-3 in the finale. We're going to take a break in the action. We'll be back and we'll talk a little gun runner when we return back to work looking for a Whitney Encore in the Woodward. Undefeated in sprint competition, Eclipse champion Run Happy captured three grade one victories and set blistering speed records at both Keeneland and Saratoga. In the Breeders' Cup sprint, he dominated the world's fastest runners, going six furlongs in a record-breaking 108 and change. The only horse nominated for three Eclipse awards, Run Happy was crowned champion male sprinter, all the while racing 100% drug-free. Champion, millionaire, record-breaker, Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Bets Pick 5 is now available exclusively online at NairaBets.com. Bet the Naira Bets Pick 5 every race day with a 15% takeout on the last five races on the card from the country's best racing at Belmont and Saratoga. Find it nationwide at NairaBets.com right in the Bet Type drop down menu or at any Naira track or New York OTB location. Naira Bets Pick 5, racing's best bet. Back on Saratoga Live, it is his world right now at Saratoga. Jose Ortiz, a five-win afternoon, holding up the sign. Well done. Wins for Graham Motion here to cap things off, $17.20. And he had Tusk in perfect position to win this race. Send it downstairs to Maggie standing by with the hot hand here at the spa. 
I feel like I should be just doing this to him, even though he's not even paying attention right now. You know, he's just cool. Uh, Jose, five winner day, capped off here by Tusk. And this was just a textbook ride. It was beautiful. You made sure they went out in front of you, and then you cut the corner. Beautiful. Thank you, first of all. And yeah, I mean, I came out of that little aggressive, and just in case they don't put face in front of me. But they did, so I drop, take back, drop in and try to say the most ground I could. I was in the far outside in the beginning of the race, and you see where I was in the quarter pole, I was in the one hole. <laughs> yes, you were. You were skimming the, I, let me check your boot. There's no white on it, but there could have been. Um, Jose, I was talking before the race about how you warm horses up. I mean, you really give them every shot to kind of get their muscles working. You gallop off, and then you make them kind of use themselves in a jog. Talk about that with each horse that you ride. I mean, each, each horse is different, you know. Um, I, I let him go away from the pony if I know the horse, you know. If I don't know the horse, it's tough. Oh, the trainer told me, yeah, he's good in the morning, let him go. Like this case today, Graham told me that he's a very sweet horse, and he was. He <laughs> let me go away from the pony when I'm good and, and do whatever, you know, save ground, do whatever you want. And uh, I did, a very sweet horse in the post parade, and I'm glad he broke well. I put him in good position, and, and, and he run turning for home. Uh, I mean, this is your fifth winner of today, and I mean, your Saratoga meet is just going very well, and I'm certainly uh, sure to plan here. But, Jose, five winners, I mean, what can you say about that at Saratoga? It's, it's really nice. I mean, uh, I did it last year, but every time you did it, it's special. I mean, uh, we don't night race, I won five. I was lucky enough to win five. Got some live horses, like I say, my agent put me in a good horse that I appreciate it, and all the owners and trainers who gave me the opportunity to ride them. And uh, what can I say? I'm going to keep working hard and try to keep winning as many as I can. Jose, congratulations. You deserve it. Thank you. And guys, I cannot ignore the smile from ear to ear on Jose down in the winner's circle. <laughs> Thank you, my oh, man should be smiling. Incredible talent made an immediate impact when he came here following his older brother, Irad Ortiz Jr., to the States. And his rise has been so rapid. What a day. Basically, the pick five save the sixth race was all Jose. That's it. And, uh, you know, Jose, when, you, when you're when you a rider and you're riding here at Saratoga, it can be intimidating. But when you get multiple wins on a card, you just move forth with confidence. And that's what we see from Jose every day. Here is that Naira Betts late pick five follow along. 50 cent payout, just over $1,000 for that sequence. And run and go, pretty heavy favorite. Second time out for Todd Pletcher. California Swing was three to one. Uncle Cy Logical, Diversify. Odds on, and you get over a thousand dollars back. Exactly. You would have thought that Diversify would have been, you know, a, a, was a heavy favorite and a single. So a good payout there. Look who's starting to pull away here. Surprise! His older brother Jose. Forty-six wins now for Jose Ortiz at the meet. Um, his older brother, I ride there in second, John Velasquez, the king of Saratoga, the all-time win leader here, not far away in third. And trainer standings, Todd Pletcher right now on top, trying to get back what he feels is rightfully his after last year. Of course, we saw Chad Brown get the training title last year. Todd Pletcher has a bevy of them under his belt, and he's starting to kind of get away from the field there. Well, Paul, incredible talent, obviously, but it's so many things that makes him so successful, including his work ethic. Yeah, his work ethic, it's, uh, ethic is main. What I wanted to tell uh, to the people basically on air is that I ended up finding out that Jose Ortiz is a huge baseball fan, and he made the right choice. He was actually between baseball and being a jockey. His favorite player, Jose Reyes, he actually sent me a picture of his glove, Wolfie. I showed it to you. It's number seven. It's orange and blue. He still has it in his car, and he says he wants to play catch with me. But rumor has it he was a pretty darn good baseball player, but I think he chose the right career. He probably could have been successful, whatever he chose. But, yeah, I think he certainly made the right choice. Your Whitney winner, Gunrunner, was back in action earlier this morning on the Oklahoma training track as he gears up for his next task, which will, of course, be the Woodward. This was a very impressive move, Greg. I mean, the way he's so fluid in his stride, he just responds to the rider every step along the way. And this is a horse who, uh, you know, he's been good throughout his career, but he is blossoming right now. And you can see it everywhere he goes in the morning and, of course, in the Whitney most recently. Whitney was a devastating performance. He was sensational 
in that race, and he looks like he is just as strong coming out of it. Here's his trainer, Steve Asmussen, on the work this morning. He relaxes really well for the front. Um, settled off the other horse nicely and stuff and just went about his business, obviously, with his race in the Whitney. Um, not worried about a fitness level with him right now, just keeping him nice and loose and happy. His energy level's where we want it to be. You know, we've had a beautiful summer as far as nice, cool mornings. I think that that's uh, aided in how he's feeling and uh, just looking for more of the same from him. Well, guys, he was tremendous, obviously, in the Whitney uh, with Arrogate losing out west. Where do you put him? I still have I, I still have Arrogate on top, um, but it's very close. You know, it's hard to get away from that Dubai performance, but I don't even worry about that stuff. I put him as a very good horse. No, he's a very good horse, and you could even tell on the work that he even sticks his neck out in the work, Gabby. Like, towards the end of that work, he's really reaching with his head, and you can see he's on top. I, d I just want to know how Songbird is third and Stourwind is fifth. Songbird has two grade ones this year. Stourwind has three. Let's back Why off Songbird just for a moment. What about the the polls? Gun runner, Andy. They're fan <laughs> polls, not accomplishment <laughs> polls. Poor Stourwind. <laughs> That's, uh, what do you think about that? Gunrunner taking over the top spot. I still think Arrogate should be number one. I do. I'm sorry, I do. You, did you like his San Diego better or his <laughs> Pacific Classic? <laughs> nice little jab there, Greg. I think he is the best horse. He has beaten Gunrunner on every occasion they've ever uh, met. We're all hoping he can come back and be the super horse that we have seen from last year and earlier this year. He's going to get one more chance in the Breeders' Cup Classic. We'll talk Travers Day when we come back. Multiple grade one winner first Samurai by Giants Causeway got off to a quick start at stud, siring grade one winners in each of his first three crops. His talented son Lee captured the grade one Don Handicap in record time and retired to stud with over $2.3 million in earnings. Sovereign Award nominee Stack Deck captured the grade three Bold Venture Stakes and grade two Kennedy Road Stakes, both just a tick off track record times. First Samurai at Claiborne Farm. Change the way you watch racing forever with the new Naira Now app. Live racing in English or Spanish. From a variety of camera angles, race replays, talking horses, race analysis, and a multitude of on-demand content, all in high definition. Naira Now is available on many platforms, including iOS, Android, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and more coming soon. Download Naira Now today, free in the App Store, and start watching the best racing like never before. Another day in the books here. Another week in the books. 
at Saratoga, back here on Saratoga Live. If you can't watch Saratoga Live with us, you can always catch it on the Naira Now app, along with live Saratoga video and race replays. Free download, available for download on iPhone, iPad, Android, Chromecast, and Roku. Search for Naira Now and enjoy all the great racing from Saratoga. Uh, one of our production assistants is leaving us, going back to college, and look at this. He was a Paul LaDuca fan way back in the day, Paulie. Here's the great part. Kevin's been here the whole meet, and he just brought out this picture. I came down to Saratoga, and I was in New York Met in 2006 on a Monday, and he took this picture. He brought it to me today, and I put on there, now you're three feet taller than me. <laughs> this is Kevin and I today on the set. This is his last day here. Kevin, thank you so much. You did not miss, the, miss a winning, and go Delaware Blue Hens. He's going to graduate this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin Kelly, thanks for everything. Our yeah. PAs have been tremendous all meet this long. Is, oh, they've been He's grown up, hasn't he? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> no, but our PAs is, are the best. This is why you they, have to be nice oh, to kids, Paul. You never know when they'll be bigger sure. than you. <laughs> exactly. We're going to be back True. on Wednesday, a day of rest. We hope you join us back up Wednesday afternoon. It's been all about Jose today. Five win afternoon. It's about the only race he did not win. Well, that was the feature. His older brother would take that. I read Ortiz Jr. on Diversify. He's now six for nine in his career. And Rick Violet, all kinds of options with him. And of course, hadn't seen it since 1979. Total solar eclipse. Hope you caught some of it.